When we started talking about this idea of taking real world analog values and reading them into the computer, we talked about a problem. Actually, there were two problems and they all centered around this idea of a sample. And a sample is basically a measurement, one of those single measurements of an analog signal. All right, now, whenever we're talking about samples, and remember, I gave you this, and I gave you this example of a spreadsheet. And so a value is read from the analog uh, input into the, uh, from the sensor through the analog to digital converter into the computer. And it's stored in perhaps like a spreadsheet form. So it takes a measurement, stores it, takes a measurement, stores it, takes a measurement, stores it, and so on. So this microphone right here is doing just that. It is acting as the sensor. The voltage levels that are generated by the rarefications and the compressions of the sound waves that are coming from my voice, those voltage levels are then digitized, create a digital sample, and then those samples are stored and the sequence of all of those are supposed to map out the sound of my voice. So one of the things that we, we run into is that if I were to look at an analog signal and realizing that I am digitizing this, I'm taking measurements. And remember, we talked a little bit about the conversion process. There's a minimum value, which corresponds to the all zeros reading. There's a maximum value, which corresponds to the all ones reading. If you know anything about audio, you know about this idea of clipping. Clipping is whenever the input volume is too big for the analog to digital converter to convert into, the, the, the range is too small for the analog to digital converter, and the volume is going beyond. And so you're basically chopping off the tops and the bottoms of the signal in order to, you know, well, you know, the, the digital values can't go any lower or can't go any higher. But the two things that we talked about whenever it comes to problems with converting an analog signal into digital, two of them. One of them is that in order to accurately create or recreate this waveform, we need to take an infinite number of measurements. Computer doesn't do infinity. The second problem is, is that one of these measurements, if there's a particular measurement I take, that measurement is going to convert to a digital value, which is not going to be exactly accurate, depending on the number of bits. Remember, we talked about bit depth. Bit depth is the number of bits in each one of our samples. If the bit depth is not great enough, then we may end up getting too much of a rounding error for that particular measurement. So let's talk about these two problems. The first thing is, is that there is something referred to as a sampling rate. Now a sampling rate, let's talk about this, sampling rate is, and it's measured in Hertz. And another way of looking at this, probably the way we can best define this, is that it is the number of samples per second. All right, so how fast are we taking those samples, right? If I'm taking a sample just once a second, then that basically means my A to D converter is, is measuring the voltage, converting it to a digital value and sending it to the computer one value every second. So the problem is, and I think you can probably see it from my drawing up here, is that if I'm not sampling fast enough, I am going to miss some characteristics of the signal. So for example, if, if during playback, because this analog signal has happened, the voice has left my mouth already, whatever this microphone has missed, it's not gonna get back. And so if I wanna play this back, what I'm basically doing is I'm gonna connect the dots. And you'll see that maybe some of these little peaks or valleys because I didn't sample fast enough, I missed details in that signal. Now, is this a problem? Sometimes it is, sometimes it isn't. Take, for example, the human ear. The human ear, a good, healthy, young ear, can hear about 20,000 and hear up to about 20,000 hertz, okay? Um, and so if there's any details that are really high up, 
then the 20,000 hertz, if we can capture everything up to the 20,000 hertz detail level, um, then we really don't care about what goes beyond that. Sounds like, well, okay, all we need to do is sample fast enough to catch that 20,000 hertz and anything below it. That's not quite the whole picture. Let's draw another diagram up here. If I've got a tone, and that's supposed to be a perfect sine wave. If I've got a tone, which is just a perfect sine wave, and let's say that this sine wave is, oh, I don't know, how about 440 hertz, a middle A. If I sample at 440 hertz exactly, samples per second, then what's going to happen is I am going to read at exactly the same position on the signal every time. The signal completely went away, completely gone. Um, if I try something else, maybe instead of sampling, maybe instead of sampling at 440 hertz, maybe I sample a little bit faster, maybe 500 hertz. And then I might do something like get a sample there, get a sample there, get a sample there, get a sample there. And what happens is I get, and if you were to continue that waveform out, you'd see it would be a very slow waveform. All right. Now, what this causes is a, something called aliasing. And aliasing is the process of when I read at too slow a sampling rate, when I'm taking my samples in at too slow a sampling rate, not only may I miss the details of the signal, I may actually create new frequencies that weren't there in the first place. For example, this 440 hertz signal, if I sample too slow, I may actually add, say, a 40 hertz signal that wasn't there in the beginning. So, a good example of this in real life, which many people have seen, is if you're driving at night or riding in a car at night, and you look over at the, at the wheels in the car riding next to you, it may look like the wheels are kind of slowing down, and then maybe they stop, and then maybe it looks like they start going backwards. That's aliasing, and it has to do with the fact that the street lights are flashing. They're flashing too fast for you to really sense that, but they're flashing, and in essence, sampling or taking pictures of that wheel at a different rate than the wheel is spinning. If it just so happens that the wheel is spinning at a multiple of the sampling rate, it looks like it has stopped. If it's actually going a little bit faster, it may look like the wheel is going backwards. If it's going a little slower, we didn't do slower, but if we were doing slower, then we would have taken a sample a little later on each time. And by doing that, makes look makes the wheel look like it's going forward, but just a little bit slower. So this is aliasing, and it is a problem whenever it comes to sampling and sampling fast enough in order for us to capture something. Well, there is actually a way to know how fast I should be sampling something, and it is called the Nyquist theorem. And the Nyquist theorem says that the sampling rate must be faster than two times the fastest frequency we want to capture. All right. That sort of ran off the board a little bit, but what it's saying is, is that we need to capture twice as, more than twice as fast as the highest frequency we want to ca capture. This makes sense if you look at some of the sampling rates that are very common out there. For example, CD quality audio, the sampling rate is 44,100 hertz. Well, what's half of 44,100 hertz? It's 22,050 hertz. What's the highest frequency that a healthy human ear should be able to hear at? 20,000 hertz. So it's saying let's sample more than twice as fast as what we can hear. Now you know why dogs don't buy CDs. They don't sample fast enough. That said, telephone. The quality of telephone 
you can tell the difference whenever you're hearing, to a t hearing a telephone conversation. Why is that? Well, because research was done long time ago that determined that in order for one human being to recognize another human being's voice, they need to have a frequency range from about, oh, 100 hertz up to 3,100 hertz. 3,100 hertz? That means that we need to sample at least 62,000, 3,100 hertz. We need to sample at least 6,200 hertz in order for us to recognize. And it turns out that for the telephone system, the sampling rate is 8,000 hertz. Plenty to keep us in that range. Now, one of the things that we have to worry about, though, is that Whenever you're, if you notice that these higher frequencies, if we sample a high frequency at a slower rate, we're going to get that weird alias new frequency. So typically what you have to do is you have to, if you want to say uh, uh, capture uh, up to, uh, let's just say uh, 22, or we'll just say 20,000 hertz, 20,000 hertz. Then you need to filter out everything above. And what that means is, is that there are going to be analog filters that are going to be used that will strip out, clear out any filters that are any, excuse me, any frequencies that are above what you can capture successfully with the sampling rate because you want to avoid getting these weird aliasings. Now, there's another thing. There was a second thing, and I don't have a whole lot of room left here on this board to show this, but one of the other things that we have to worry about is something called quantization noise. Now quantization noise is noise that is added to the signal because we are not measuring accurately enough. If you think about it this way, if I just have certain levels that I'm measuring at, whenever I go to play this signal back, I'm going to be one level for a while and then I'm going to drop down to the next level and then I'm going to drop down to the next level and I'm going to drop down to the next level and so forth. And I'm going to get this weird kind of stair step that is added to my signal. Well, if you look at this weird little stair step, what you've got is this error that is in the form of these weird little triangles. And that error, whenever you go to play that error back, or when you go to play that signal back, those errors, that weird, those weird little triangles, are going to create a sawtooth wave. Now, in some space that I've got here, maybe I can try and draw it up here, a sawtooth wave looks like this. Now, if you add that to an audio signal, you're going to get a very harsh sound, a very harsh buzzing or, you know, grinding noise. That is quantization noise. And if you want to avoid quantization noise, you need to increase your bit depth. So to fix quantization noise, you need to increase the bit depth. And by increasing the bit depth, you will, sl you will make those triangles shrink down to the point where they're not adding to the signal when you're trying to play it back.